Alright, this is lesson 6.2, Angles in Standard Position in All Quadrants. So, this lesson, of course, being in All Quadrants, last lesson what we had was just in Quadrant 1. When we go to All Quadrants, as you may have expected, things get a little bit more complicated. Alright, so, uh, just to remind you that when we are talking All Quadrants, what I mean by this is that we have this being our first quadrant, second, third, and fourth quadrants, like so. Okay? So, let's get it going here. The terminal arm of an angle in Quadrant 1 can be successively reflected in both axes, to form angles in all four quadrants. Each angle is in the uh, standard position. The reference angle for all four angles is the acute angle that the terminal arm makes with the x axis. Okay. And when I talk about reference angle, the symbol that I'm going to use to represent reference angle is going to be this little um, a kind of looks like so, uh, which we call alpha. Okay, so um, let's get going here with a uh, little. I guess it's it's not so much an example, but it's kind of a way to think about these in terms of all four of these quadrants. Okay, so let's review first uh, quadrant one. So each one of these four graphs on this page are going to represent a quadrant. So quadrant one and quadrant two we'll deal with up here first. So. What we notice is that when we have um, the first quadrant, like so, let's say that we have my terminal arm going out like this, and that I know that theta right here is equal to 30 degrees. Well, in the first quadrant, what I know then always is that alpha, my reference angle, is equal to theta. Okay, they'll always be equal to the same thing, but that's the only quadrant where that happens. Okay, we get to quadrant two, let's say. Let's say my terminal arm falls right in here, and that theta is this angle on the outside going right to here, and it's worth, let's say, 150 degrees. Well, in this example, what uh, would happen is my reference angle would be on this side right here. Okay. So that would be where alpha would be. Alpha would be right there, and theta would be on this outside. So how do we calculate alpha? Well, alpha is always equal to 180 degrees. Now, if you think about this, it should make sense, because 180 degrees would take you all the way across from one axis uh, to the other here. That's gone 180 degrees, and if we want to just figure out what this little bit is in right here, we just need to subtract what theta is, like so. So in this circumstance, what you can see is that alpha would be 180 degrees minus 150, it means that that would be 30 degrees over here. Okay. So that's uh, in the first two quadrants. I didn't label this one quadrant two. Uh, let's take a look at what happens in quadrant three. And these are going to be something that you're probably going to need to, I don't really know, memorize. I think you'll, they'll just, uh, it'll happen uh, naturally, but definitely things that you need to know. In quadrant three and in quadrant four, let's look at what happens here. So, in quadrant three, let's say theta goes all the way into quadrant three to meet this terminal arm, like so. And let's again, let's make this one 210 degrees, so that's what theta is going to be. Well, your reference angle always starts from the x-axis, so it's going to go from here. All right, and how do you determine what that is? Well, for this one, in order to find alpha, my reference angle, I would take theta, so that would be 210 degrees, and I would subtract, this time, 180 degrees. And so if I did that for here, we would find out that, of course, theta is on the outside here. We'd find out that alpha, my reference angle, would be equal to 210 minus 80, which gave me 30 degrees for my reference angle. Okay. And lastly, in quadrant four. In quadrant four, let's say that my terminal arm is right here. And we've gone around and we've done, let's say, 330 degrees. So theta is equal to 330 out here. And let's say we're trying to find my reference angle. Reference angle is going from here to here. Well, in order to do that, alpha would be equal to 360 degrees, so that would be 360 degrees would basically take you all the way around. You just need to subtract this theta, and then you'd be left with alpha. So 360 degrees minus theta will give you what alpha is. All right? And so in this circumstance, it would give you 30 degrees. Notice how in each one of these scenarios, we found out that the reference angle was equal to uh, 30 degrees. Uh, one thing I've given my students in the past that they find a little bit uh, kind, of, or kind of beneficial to them is that these angles that we're talking about when I'm trying to find alpha, it's always the angle. It kind of makes a little bit of a bow tie right here. Okay, imagine these are all triangles like so. It's 
always going to be the angle that it makes with the x-axis. So all of those would end up being equal in the scenario that we had right there. All those are my reference angles depending on which quadrant you're in. All right. Let's turn to the next page. All right, in the previous lesson, 6.1, the trigonometric ratios for an angle in standard position in quadrant 1 were related to the coordinates of a point on the terminal arm of the angle. These relationships can be extended to uh, define the primary trigonometric ratios for any angle in standard position. All right, in quadrant 1, if you recall, we would have this point P. And point P in terms of sine and cosine, we would have R cosine of theta. Okay, which represented the horizontal distance that you went. And we also had r sine of theta, so I'm referencing our last lesson. Well, if I go and rearrange these in terms of um, cosine theta and sine theta, we can be able to figure out what it's always going to be in terms of quadrant one right here. So if I take r cosine of theta, and that represents my horizontal uh, distance x, I can solve this cosine theta would be equal to always x over r in quadrant one. So that's always going to be what cosine of theta is equal to when we're dealing in the first quadrant. All right, let's deal with it now in terms of sine. We'd have r sine of theta is equal to y, right? That represents my vertical distance right here. And if you rearrange for sine of theta, you get this is equal to y over r. All right, so I'll highlight each one of these once we've determined what they exactly are. Uh, the tangent one you're going to see is a little bit easier. Tangent of theta right here is simply just equal to my opposite over my adjacent, which is y over x. All right, so tangent does not include, that hypotenuse does not include your r. Let's look at see what happens in quadrant two. So quadrant two is very similar, only if you notice, we've gone in the negative x direction. So my point p is going to be the exact same thing I have there, only it's going to be a negative r cosine of theta. And the sine is still going in the positive direction, so it's still the same. So as a result, the only thing that's really going to change here, you'll see, is anything that has to do with x. So if you look at this, what has to do with x? Well, cosine and tangent have something to do with x, so those ones are going to change, whereas the sine ratio is going to stay the same. So r, sorry, negative r, cosine of theta is equal to x. In order to get cosine theta by itself, we have to divide by the negative r, so we get negative x over r, being your first ratio that we figured out. The next one, this would be the one that we'd expect to say the same. We have r sine of theta is equal to y. We get sine of theta is equal to y over r. And then tangent, we expect it to be somewhat different because of course it has x and we've gone in the negative direction. So this one, since we've gone in the negative direction, we'll have negative y over x. Okay, basically the x is just negative, but I brought it up to the numerator. Okay, so we've dealt with quadrants one and two. Let's see what happens in quadrants three and four. So in quadrant three, well, if you notice that uh, this point P here has gone in the negative x direction, so to get you to negative to here, and then it's gone in the negative y direction. So this P is actually located at negative r cosine of theta and negative r sine of theta. So how is that going to change things? Well, let's take a look. Let's deal with the x first. We have negative r cosine of theta is equal to x. And if we rearrange this, we get cosine of theta is equal to negative x over r as your first ratio. Next one we have here is negative r sine of theta is equal to y. We get sine of theta is equal to negative y over r. And then tangent. Tangent's kind of interesting right here. Because we have to go in the negative x direction, negative y direction, those two negatives basically just cancel one another out. And so we get tan of theta, which is the same as we had in quadrant uh, one, is equal just to x, or sorry, y over x. Okay. Let's take a gander at what happens when we're dealing with quadrant four right here. All right. So quadrant four, we've gone in the positive x direction. So this coordinate right here is going to be r cosine of theta. And we've gone in the negative y direction. We've gone downward, so it's going to be negative r sine of theta. So r cosine of theta is equal to x. Cosine of theta is equal to x over r. First one. We got negative. We got negative r sine of theta is equal to y, that gives you sine of theta is equal to negative y over r. 
And then lastly, we have the tangent guy. We got tangent of theta. We've gone in the positive x direction, and we've gone in the negative y. So this time we're going to have a negative y over x. Okay. Now this chart's going to be something that you're going to refer to quite a bit. So as you're going through your lessons, make sure you have this uh, handy. I think you'll find that. Uh, Go to the next page. So what we can say in general here is the trigonometric ratios of angles in standard position follow this rule. For any angle theta in standard position between 0 and 360 degrees with terminal points at P located at XY, the primary trigonometric ratios are defined as the following. So what we just determined on the previous page was depending on what quadrant they're in, some are going to be positive and some are going to be negative. All right? That's something that we'll look on the next page. I'm going to reference uh, the cast rule. All right, example one here. The point B, um, which is at negative 2, negative 4, is on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. Determine the primary trigonometric ratios of theta. So let's go and draw ourselves a little bit of a picture here to get uh, this one started. All right, so we did a question kind of like this in, uh, in lesson 6.1, but of course that was just in quadrant 1. So let's see what happens now when we're in uh, a different quadrant. Draw our four quadrants like so. Negative 2, negative 4 would be, let's say, right around here. So we have B is located at negative 2, negative 4. Okay. This will be my terminal arm. And that is measured with R, R being the length of it. If I make a exact value triangle right here, theta would be this angle going all the way around right here. So that's theta. And of course, this little angle right here would be alpha, my reference angle. Okay, so in order to do this to start with, we need to find out what the distance of R is. So we know that we've gone down 4. So this is negative 4 over there, and this is negative 2. We can just use Pythagoras to figure out what that is. So using Pythagoras, I have negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared is equal to R squared. We get 4 plus 16 is equal to R squared. It gives you R squared is equal to 20. And then when we solve for R, we take the square root of both sides. We get root 20. And what I'd like you to do always is, if you can, try and simplify this radical. Root 20 does have a perfect square that lives inside of it. It would be 4 times 5, so you can write this as 2 root 5, like so. Okay? So that's what r is in general. Now, what are they asking you to do here? They want you to determine the three primary trigonometric ratios. So I'll do this in blue. So if you remember, cosine of theta in this quadrant, okay, if you reference your previous page, is equal to negative x over r. And you should be able to see this. I've gone in the negative x direction, so that's my adjacent side. I'm putting it over my hypotenuse, which is r. All right. Sine of theta is equal to, well, if you think we've gone in the negative y directions, my, um, my opposite sides, so we have negative y, and then that's going to be over r. So like I said, you don't really need to memorize these, but I think you're going to, uh, after a while anyways. And then we have tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to my opposite side, that's negative y. We've gone in the negative y direction over negative x, which just simplifies to be y over x. So let's substitute in now, and then we'll be uh, done this question. So x is negative 2, all divided by your r, which is 2 root 5. And if you notice here that these do simplify, all right, we get negative 2 divided by 2 just gives you negative 1 over root 5. Okay, so that's your cos ratio. Now the sine ratio, we'd have negative y, so negative y would be negative 4, all over r, r being 2 root 5. This also simplifies to give you negative 2 over root 5. Okay. And then lastly, tangent of theta. Tangent of theta, we have y, which is negative 4, all over negative 2, which simplifies to just give you 2. Uh, on the next, uh, or the next example uh, here, B says, determine the measure of theta to the nearest degree. Well, they want you to figure out what that entire theta is right there. Well, the first thing that I would do is I would use uh, one of the trigonometric ratios that we just figured out. So let's scroll down here. So I'll make a little note for you. Use the trigonometric ratio that was, and this is very important, positive. Underline that. Um, from part A. And there's always going to be at least one. All right? And so in this circumstance, you notice that this was the one that was positive. So that's going to allow me to figure out what my reference angle is. right? So if I take this, I have tangent 
of, and when I figure this out, what I'm actually going to be figuring out is what alpha is.